Hello, my name is Charles Blitt. I'm a final year medical student. I'm going to be talking to you today about the skill of cannulation and also setting up an IV drip. So to begin with, it's important to gather the right equipment. So I've started off by washing my hands and putting on some gloves. I'm going to take this tray to hold my equipment and into it I'm going to put a tourniquet, some alcohol wipes and some gauze. I'm then going to get some sterile saline to act as a flush and it's important just to confirm by looking that this is sterile saline and also to check the expiry date and it's useful to confirm this with a colleague if you can. Then I'm going to also take a syringe uh, to use as my flush. I'm going to take a cannula. There are different sizes and colours that are good for different things, but in this case we're going to use a pink 20 gauge cannula. And then I'm then going to get a tagoderm to stick down the cannula. I'm going to get the appropriate fluids that we're going to use. In this case it's glucose, 5%. And again, it's important to check the expiry date. And I'm going to get a giving set, which is what we use to attach the bag of fluids to the cannula. Um, then once I've assembled all this equipment, I'm going to open up the tagoderm um, as it's important to write on today's date and the time, just so that you know when it should be removed. So you can do that like so. And if you see uh, here, there's just a place to write in today's date. So I'm just going to get a pen and do that now. And I'm also going to take this time just to draw up some saline into here in preparation of flushing it. Okay. And now that my equipment's ready, it's time to approach the patient. So when you're approaching the clinical area, it's important to make sure that you've brought a sharp spoon with you so that you can safely dispose of any needles that you might be using during the procedure and just to place that down on a flat surface near the patient. It's then good to introduce yourself to the patient, confirm their identity and date of birth uh, using their name tag and obviously also speaking to them um, and then just explain the procedure to them that you've come to put a small plastic tube into their arm using a needle. They'll feel a sharp scratch uh, but it shouldn't be painful and if it is painful at any point that they should tell you and you can stop whatever it is you're doing. Then explain that after that you'll set up uh, some fluids to go through the drip and they might feel a cool sensation in the arm but again it shouldn't be painful at all. Um, you can then approach the patient uh, and attach the tourniquet so just tell them that it might be a little uncomfortable uh, because it has to be quite tight but again to let you know if there's any pain at all. And Once the tourniquet is attached you can start to look and feel for a vein that you think might be appropriate for cannulation. Then once you've identified one, you can get out your alcohol wipe. And with one single wipe, wipe and one single making sure you're not going, going over the same, the same ground, ground twice, twice and then dispose of that wipe you're interested in and dispose of it in a bin. And then wait 30 seconds for the alcohol to evaporate. During this time, you can get your cannula ready. So you can open up the pack. And if you remove the white bung, you'll need that later. So just put that to one side. And then you can fold out the wings of the cannula as well, which help to fix it down once it's attached. Given that the right amount of time has now passed, you can tell the patient uh, just to get ready as they'll feel a sharp scratch soon. You unsheath the cannula and making sure you have the beveled edge of the needle facing upwards and going in at approximately a 45 degree angle. You should then say sharp scratch, enter the vein and then slightly withdraw the needle and you should see a flashback of blood. Then advance the plastic tube, slowly withdrawing the sharp needle as you go until the cannula has been inserted up to the hilt. You should then hold above the vein with your finger to prevent any blood from coming out. Remove the sharp needle put it in the sharp spin and at this point you can attach a connector to act as a valve to stop any blood coming out and reduce the chance of any infection and that's neatly attached. Then you can release your finger and it's time to fix the cannula down using your tegoderm. So but before you do that it's important to check that the cannula is patent so we take our saline flush and attach it to the top valve here 
and then you just warn the patient they'll feel a cool sensation in their arm and you should slowly inject the fluid and if it's patent as this is you see there's no swelling of the tissue in the local area and then it goes in with little resistance. You then remove the flush, reseal this valve and attach the cannula. So we take our tagoderm that we prepared earlier and there are two uh, white strips on it here and what we do is peel these off and place one down over each of those two wings that we folded out. And these help secure it to the skin and stop it from moving around. Then you take this covering here and it's got a non-sticky back which you peel away. And then these two legs separate and go either side of the pink bung that's in the top. And you just place that firmly down. And there's also then another non-sticky covering on top which will peel away. And you just must carefully retain the date that you wrote down earlier and stick that just to the side of the covering so that people can see when the cannula was first placed and when it should be replaced. And it's just one more piece to peel away. And sometimes it can be a bit fiddly, but don't be afraid just to take the time to make sure everything's stuck down into place and that you've removed it all properly. Then this should be disposed of. Uh, and now that we've attached the cannula properly, it's time to draw up our fluids uh, and prepare the giving set. The first thing you need to do when you're going to give some fluids is to check that you have the right fluids. So ideally you'd have the patient's prescription chart with you uh, and that would be a good uh, source to check the fluids. Here we've got glucose 5% and we've got 1000 mils and as I mentioned before it's really important to check that the glucose is in date and you can see here that it is and it's useful to confirm this with a colleague. Um, you should also have a giving set here and this is just to allow the fluid to flow from the bag into the cannula. So you want to open up both of these. And you can see that this bag has two ports on it. One on this side that can be used for injecting certain things into there. And the other one here which we're going to attach our giving set to. And the way to open this is just to twist the plastic tab that's on the top. And that's now open. And you don't want to touch any of this with non-sterile equipment. So just lay that down in its packaging. Then to open up the giving set. And you can see that it has two ends. One which has a screw on it which attaches to the cannula and the other which has a sheathed uh, blunted needle on which can be attached to the fluid bag. So what we want to do is to remove that sheath. Again, trying our best not to touch anything that isn't sterile. And to insert that into the port that we've just done, being careful not to puncture the bag. And a twisting motion is sometimes useful to make sure that that's in nice and tightly. Then, if we bring up our fluid bag and attach it to the strip stand here, the first thing we need to do, we can see the chamber is empty and the system is locked. What we want to do is to squeeze this chamber gently, and as we do, some water comes in. And what we want to do is to make sure it's approximately halfway full, and this just reduces the chance of any air bubbles working their way into the system. Then, taking the end that attaches to the cannula, we want to unscrew the cover. And you can just use your tray or kidney dish uh, to catch any excess water that might come out. And you can see that the lines run through, so it's important then to lock it back off again. And you just run the line through to make sure there are no bubbles present in the system. And now that we've run it through and that chamber's halfway full, the set is ready to be attached. So we dispose of any waste that we had from before go back to your patient with the cannula and explain that you've got your fluids ready now and because we haven't touched the cannula for a while it's important just to flush it through again to make sure that the line is still patent without any blockage so you can remove this pink cap here on top again we've got our normal saline that we drew up earlier just to attach that there 
and gently flush through some water into the line. And we can still, that's still patent, no resistance there, and no tissue swelling, so the line is still viable. So then we take the end of our giving set and we just attach that to the line there. Then once you've attached the fluid line to your cannula, you open up the giving set again by rolling this towards the top and you can see that the drips are falling into the reservoir and depending on what rate they're falling will determine how fast or slow the infusion is given. Uh, then you thank the patient, uh, clear up the clinical area and if they don't have any questions for you, you've completed your task of inserting a cannula and setting up an IV infusion.